word on the street is he warned them to stop meddling but did the u.s listen as usual they didn't i'll be back Before I go into this content, I want to say I did not know that a lot of people in this country and around the world did not know about those Russian icon photos. I became aware of it, I'll say maybe three years ago or a few, maybe a little longer. I was actually considering buying a book. That's how serious it was. When I saw that they had that book uh, they had paintings filled with um, drawings of the true depiction of Jesus and disciples and followers, Hebrews that looked like me. I was like, oh, my God. And I was wondering why so many black uh, content creators that talk about black history um, in this country and around the world. Why nobody was talking about these paintings? I never thought to think to do any videos on it and maybe God was saying it wasn't time because when you're not ready to receive something it's no time it's, it's it's no purpose in doing it so our people were still you know stuck in oppression and and it's like God is being is is spoon feeding them so you can't put too much on us because you know anyway so I just was like, wow, why not? Why aren't a lot of people talking about this? I already knew why a lot of white folks wasn't talking about it. But black folks who look like me and, you know, why weren't they talking about this? And I realized after he unveiled the, the work, a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people who look like me didn't know. A lot of people who don't look like me didn't know. So let's go on from what i ascertain it looked like it came to a head in 2023 president vladimir putin warned the west ahead of elections in march of this year that any foreign meddling in russia would be considered an act of aggression russia's full-scale invasion of ukraine in february 2022 has led to the most serious confrontation between moscow and the west since the 1962 cuban missile crises prompting putin to pivot towards china since the invasion putin has changed the narrative of the war casting it as an existential battle between sacred russian civilian and an arrogant west which he says is in cultural political and economic decline um can anyone tell me what is america's culture if anyone can answer that question for me i would greatly appreciate it let's continue the kremlin chief has said that the west was gripped by racist russian phobia which cast Russians as a people of backward slaves and warned that the United States allegedly wanted to dismember and plunder Russia's vast resources. I want to underscore, we consider any interference from outside provocations aimed at causing inter-ethnic or inter-religious conflicts as aggressive acts against our country, Putin said. I want to emphasize again that any attempt to show inter-ethnic, inter-religious discord to split our society is a betrayal, a crime against the whole of Russia. We will not allow anyone to divide Russia. The West cast Putin as a dictator who has led Russia into an imperial style land grab that has weakened Russia and forged Ukraine's statehood while uniting the West and handing NATO a post-Cold post War mission. 
Putin said that the West is now failing in Ukraine and that its attempt to defeat Russia has also failed. Now here's how the Russian icon pictures became, um, was put on worldwide display. This is what happened. Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered or had ordered Moscow because this was written, um, I think, in 2023. Putin ordered Moscow's state-run gallery arts museum to hand over the country's Trinity icon to the Russian Orthodox Church. The church said on May 15th, I think it was 23, that the decision was made after multiple multiple requests by believers the arts museum gave the icon to the church to use in a religious event who okay so basically when vladimir putin ordered the must the uh, moscow gallery to send the trinity icon pictures back to the orthodox church this set putin up publicly to show the world these pictures depicting who I was talking about this said this gave Vladimir Putin an excellent opportunity to show how hypocritical America is how arrogant America is and how America talks out of the side of his neck America has this thing where it wants to go around the world and and lecture and dictate to people, but America hasn't even taken care of its garbage that it created. So when Putin put these iconic pictures on display of who the Bible is written about, who the true Hebrews are, how Jesus really looked, it basically just blew America out of the water. It's like... It showed who was the true racist, who are the true hypocrites. Because America certainly wasn't going to do it. America, we people have said, I have said many times that America knows who we are. Cat Williams did an interview at the top of the year saying that that's why they watch us because they know who we are, but we don't know who we are. So Putin was like, you know what? I done told y'all to stop meddling. I done told you to stay out of my business. You guys want to talk about us, want to make us look so bad. But ding, 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 newsflash, you're the one who put God's children in slavery. We didn't put God's children in slavery. Yet you try to sit on your high horse and put everybody down. You are the biggest fools, arrogant fools who dared to touch God's children and you're God's chosen And you're still touching them. And you're still doing them wrong. And you're still murdering them. And you're still treating them unfairly. But then you're coming over here talking about me and trying to put me down. And my country down. So it was a two for one thing. He gave the pictures, the iconic pictures back to where the believers wanted them. He gave it back to them. And then he struck a mighty blow against America. He basically confirmed what we've been saying all along. Nobody didn't want to believe the black folks. Ah, niggers, you're not a Jew. You're not a Hebrew. You're no more a Hebrew than a dog is a cat. (laughs) Now you're looking and feeling stupid. Let's continue. Jeremiah 2213, New New King James Version says... Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages and gives him nothing for his work. Now, that's the scripture. So you white folks are you people who love to to pretend like you're so into the Bible. But then you ignore those script, those scriptures. That is the scripture you can use as a platform, as a foundation for reparations. Gives him nothing for his work. You guys have black folks slaving over here for hundreds of years and didn't give them anything. And still got the nerves to keep kicking dust in their face. Watch what God do to you. Watch what God does to you guys. 
watch. We on all the whole world gonna see you fall. Like the world saw God's true Hebrews fall, chosen people fall. Watch, we gonna see you guys who built yourself up as a wicked nation. We gonna see you fall. It's happening now. Let's continue. Now what I'm about to do is build a little small case showing how and why America should have left the chosen people alone. It would have been in your best benefit. It would have, it would have behooved you to leave us alone, leave our ancestors alone and leave us alone. That's why the price you, your ancestors have to pay or it's going through the bloodline, the price you have to pay for what your ancestors did is going to be so great. Let's go on. For the two centuries preceding the American Civil War, 1861 to 65, one historian found documentary evidence of more than 250 uprisings or attempted uprising involving 10 or more slaves whose aim was personal freedom. The most infamous revolt was Nat Turner's revolt, August 1831. This was prior to the Civil War. In August 1831, Nat Turner struck fear into the hearts of white Southerners by leading the only effective slave rebellion in U.S. history. Born on a small plantation in Southampton County, Virginia, Turner inherited a passionate hatred of slavery from his African-born mother and came to see himself as anointed by God to lead his people out of bondage. Psalms 94, 5-6 They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the orphans. The early abolition movement in North America was fueled both by enslaved people's effort to liberate themselves and by groups of white settlers such as the Quakers who opposed slavery on religious or moral grounds. In the early 19th century, however, a new brand of radical abolition emerged in the North, partly in reaction to Congress's passage of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793 and the tightening of colds in most southern states. Anti-slavery northerners, many of them free black people, had begun helping enslaved people escape from southern plantations to the north via loose network of safe houses as early as 1780s called the Underground Railroad. In the spring of 1861, the bitter sectional conflicts that have been intensifying between North and South over the course of four decades erupted into civil war. With 11 Southern states seceding from the Union and forming the Confederate States of America. You know those states that did, that was treason. You see how certain groups can do things against this country and mm -hmm, they still bragging about it today. That was treason. Let's continue. Though President Abraham Lincoln's anti-slavery views were well established and his election as the nation's first Republican president had been the catalyst that pushed the first Southern states to secede in late 1860, the Civil War at its outset was not a war to abolish slavery. Lincoln sought first and foremost to preserve the Union, and he knew that few people even in the North, let alone the border slave states still loyal to Washington, would have supported a war against slavery in 1861. So the Civil War wasn't a war against slavery. It was a war to, kill, to keep slavery. Let's continue. Stop lying and, and being delusional. You got to face, you got to, sooner or later, you're going to have to face the facts and realize how wicked and abhorrent this country is. Notice I say is, I don't say was. Let's continue. By the summer of 1862, however, Lincoln have, had come to believe he could not avoid the slavery question much longer. In September, he issued a preliminary emancipation proclamation on January 1st, 1863. He made it official that enslaved people within any state or designated part of a state in rebellion shall be then, then forward 
thenceforward and forever free. Lincoln justified his decision as a wartime measure, and as such, he did not go as far as to free enslaved people in the border states loyal to the Union, an omission that angered many abolitionists. So he did the emancipation, but it, had, it was contingent. You know, so many people want to brag about what Lincoln did. It's like, mm -mm. if you do some thorough history, thorough research, and I have two videos where I talk about um, how devastating the emancipation was for black folks because they were freed into nothing. They were freed into more hatred and, you know, ungodly acts committed against them and died from starvation and diseases because they were drinking water that was infested and eating food, you know, they had, they had no way to find food. And it, it was just terrible. Um, so, ooh, let's continue. I got, all you got to do is do, do a little research and see what the emancipation actually did to black folks. And um, millions of black people died, you know. And then you had in, in evil, wicked enslavers that refused to let them go free. So they killed thousands of um, freed slaves because they weren't going to let them go free. If they couldn't keep them in slavery, they killed them. Three million free people in rebel states deprived the Confederacy of the bulk of its labor forces and put international public opinion strongly on the Union side. Some 186,000 black soldiers would join the Union Army. By the time the war ended in 1865, 38,000 lost their lives. Psalms 10 2 the wicked in his pride persecutes the poor let them be caught in the plots which they have devised and soon you guys are about to see yourself get caught in the plots you devised this is where i firmly believe you know things that that have transpired especially after um enslaved were supposedly set free and Lincoln was preparing to give them something so they could start their lives anew. And of course, he was assassinated. And Andrew Jackson said, bump, bump that. I don't care what Lincoln said he was going to do for you, niggerses. I'm not. You should have did it. Maybe the price you guys have to pay for what your ancestors did wouldn't be so terrible. The black leaders gathered for the January 12, 1865 meeting with the military officials in a mansion called the Green Meldron House. They explained that they didn't want to live among white people. <laughs> and, and that was for obvious reasons. Now you want to act like you don't want to live around black people, please. A lot of us especially in the 1965 when you know martin luther king was talking about coming against segregation a lot of the older black folks knew what was up and they did not want integration they didn't want it but you had a lot of young folks that's like hey you know what we're in this country too so um this is unfair and i know the older black people was like listen take it from me i'm trying to tell y'all you we want to be separated and all we got to do is just pull our resources together and our, our incredible knowledge and intellects together and our um, strong determination and tenacity, just put it together and we can build our own. We're stronger now. We have weapons now. You know, we can fight back. But they don't want to listen. Like I keep asking a question, what did integration do for our people? No one has answered that question. Can anyone tell me the benefits of integration? How did it benefit us as a whole? Point it out. And everything you come out and try to point out, I'm going to come in and show you how it damned you further. Because all they did was discover a way to bring you into the fold, supposedly, and take your money and keep their eyes on you to keep oppressing you. That's why it's mass incar incarceration. That's why you have inferior schools. And that's why they get all the public school systems, all the money is going to white communities. 
and you still don't have anything and they're still closing your schools and they still put you in the raggediest impoverished communities and counties but yeah you fall hard for integration we should have remained separated from those people their evil wick wicked sickening thoughts of us is a disease it's worse than cancer let's continue the black leaders said they didn't want to live among white people as they feared it would take years for a radical prejudice to dissipate in the south and here we are <laughs> this was 1865 and we're in 2024 still dealing with the stupid nonsense of their wicked minds and fear fear of retaliation you know what you fear comes on you and overtakes you so y'all who keep wanting a, a civil war that's what, i don't i really don't think that's what you want is that saying you're gonna get what you want you're gonna regret it because god is fighting our battles Trust me, you can laugh how you want to, but let, let try to try to do a civil civil war. I don't care what armies you have that will try to come against God's people. You will regret it, like you're regretting things now, but you don't say it publicly. But one day, you're not gonna keep being able to hide how you truly feel about your wicked actions. You're gonna have to tell the truth. Let's continue. Instead, they wish to live amongst themselves on their own land. It would have been better for us to live amongst ourselves. You see what we did when we built successful communities before hatred and fear and jealousy came and destroyed it. We didn't need their help because they wasn't going to give it to us. So we found our own way and we built successful communities. What do you think we could do now? We have weapons to protect ourselves too. Don't get it twisted. Let's continue. That would entail redistributing the land of Southern plantation owners. They stole it anyway. The way we can take best care of ourselves is to have land and, and till it by our own labor, said Reverend Garrison Frazier, a 67-year-old Baptist minister and spokesman, and spokesman for the group, which included individuals who had been enslaved and lived as free men alike. We want to be placed on land until we are able to buy it and make it our own, Frazier told the union military officials. Stanton knew that the meeting was a groundbreaking one, remarking that for the first time, government officials had asked black Americans what they wanted for themselves. He gave the minutes taken at the meeting to Henry Ward Beecher, brother of the Uncle Tom's cabin, Arthur Harriet Beecher Stowe. The idea to strip Southern enslavers of their land wasn't exclusive to the leaders who attended the Green Mildred House meeting. Abolish Charles Sumner and Thaddeus Stevens had promoted the idea as a way to financially devastate Confederate landowners. Still, Harvard historian Henry, Henry Louis Gates Jr. credits Savannian black leaders with spearheading the events that followed. After meeting with the 20 ministers, Sherman signed Field Order 15 on January 16, 1865. The order would reserve 400,000 acres of Confederate land for members of the formerly enslaved population. When the land near the southeast coast was evenly redistributed, each family would have 40 acres of tangible land. Union generals were attempted to divide these slave plantations into small form settlements and make them available to the newly freed slaves says valerie grimm director of undergraduate studies african-american and african diaspora studies and professor of african-american and african diaspora studies at indiana university bloomington no mention of mules appeared in the order but some of the formerly enslaved population were granted army mules resulted in this reparations program being widely known widely known as 40 acres and a mule the government didn't keep its promise as we know following president abraham lincoln's assassination and you know why he was assassinated because he was attempted to do something right 
for the tragedy, even though it wouldn't have taken the land and the mule wouldn't have taken the place of all, it still would have been a start for us to build our own lives and be separate of these people who refuse to treat us as God sees us. Let's continue. April, April the 15th, 1865, President Andrew Johnson rescinded Field Order 15 and returned to the Confederate owners the 400,000 acres of land, a strip of coastline stretching from Charleston, South Carolina to St. John's River in Florida, including Georgia Sea Island and the, main and the mainland 30 miles from the coast. What would have been so hard in giving that land to people that you have gotten hundreds of years of free labor from? What was so hard in doing that? Because they wouldn't have been able to keep us bound working for them in other ways under sla after slavery, keeping them rich and keeping us poor. They know that they had over 200 years to see and know how tenacious and resilient we are. They saw the resilience and they was like, hell no, nah. they gonna come and supersede us. Look how they can literally, you know that, that saying, we, I used to say it in elementary school, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Oh, we would have made a dollar out of two cents. They knew it, they saw it. The inventions that we came up with the, just the things that we would take um, around from the plantation to help make our lives easier. They saw the simple things we would do and make them phenomenal, and they couldn't conceive it. They didn't even know how we did it. So they knew if we can take things from and, and we can build phenomenal equipment and, and tools on their plantations to help make their work easier. They could imagine what we would do if we were had our own unmolested from them and and not be molested by them in any kind of way like i said we would have been richer than them let's continue obadiah 1 chapter 1 2 and verse 2 behold i will make you small among the nations you shall be greatly despised <laughs> We no other group on this earth has been as despised as we are, and we have been. But we had to go through it for a season, and as you guys have been aware of, um, been made aware of more clear. A lot of people was like, "Well, why would we go through this? And why, if, we, if God exists and if we are the chosen, why do we have to go through this? Because your ancestors before you were defiant. They were rebellious. They were hard headed." wicked people at times and God was so tired of it so instead of him destroying his chosen people he put you through uh, for over 400 years of punishment so you can get it right he didn't have you to go through this just to come back and be rebellious he had you to go through this so you can learn from your so you can so we can learn from what our ancestors did to put us in such a terrible state that people who hated us was given control over us that you're going to be put in the hands of people who hate you and take it to a foreign land and your children were going to be separated from you and you're going to be plowing and working in fields where you're not going to even be able to eat the food because of disobedience that's why it's imperative to stop being disobedient but this time when he gathers his people back trust me we're going to do it right and we're not going to give God a reason to be angry with us because we are being rebellious and stubborn and disobedient people. That was the only reason we went through this. Disobedience can change your life for the worse. So that's why we went through it. So let's stop harping on it and let's go forward. He's showing you that he's coming through. He's about to release us. So all you got to do is, is, is ask him to keep you obedient so you won't go through this again. Because I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't be like Moses. When God say, you know what, 
this group of people they're being vile they're being wicked and one bad apple can spark uh, one bad apple can spoil the bunch and he want to take care of them i wouldn't be, i'm not i wouldn't be like moses okay god please please don't destroy him don't don't let our enemies say oh wow he rescued him for the egyptians and then he takes them out he takes them away from the egyptians and destroy him i'm like god do what you got to do because that little small group of people had a propensity, propensity to destroy other people because of their foul, vile, wicked ways. Do what you got to do. I'm all for removing that one bad apple so it won't spread to others. Trust. Let's go on. Check out what God says, what he'll do to oppressors. This is... Um, Behold, at a time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. What is it, Zephaniah 319? Listen to Proverbs. Do not rob the poor because he is poor nor oppress the afflicted at the gate for the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. So prices got to be paid folks. Prices have to be paid. And it, and this is another case for reparation, another um, evidence that can be applied for the case of reparations. The Bible says if you owe a debt, you have to pay it. So you don't think that making money off of fr- from free labor for hundreds of years don't have to be paid? You guys are living, it's swimming in wealth. And like I've said in multiple videos, I don't even think they're telling the truth of how much wealth they gathered off of our backs. You have families that are still that are still wealthy, and 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 their wealth came from our family our ancestors hands 2024 you still have families that have abundance of wealth from the wealth that was built from our family our ancestors hands i've said it in multiple videos before either you're gonna willingly give it or it's gonna be taken and i think so much it's gonna be so much of a shake up and stir in this land that they're gonna be running and, and begging god's people to take it like when when god stirred and shook up the egyptians and they was like here the pharaoh was just like giving them wealth he'll take it and go because god was striking them and their families they like take it the israel the hebrews left egypt with wealth that's what's gonna happen but I don't believe that we're going to be leaving this country. This is our country. They're going to have to leave. So, um, they're going to be giving up their wealth and they're going to be scattering. They're going to be, you know, they kept saying, go back to Africa and and foolishly not knowing that the whole earth is ours. Uh, God put sinners around the earth. They're going to be going back to Europe. They're going to be going back to, uh, you know, countries that they... Um, have roots in but part of the price they're going to pay is that they're going to be a reproach in those countries those people ain't even going to want them back they're going to be like uh-uh and we're going to be like uh-uh so they're going to be wandering around like um what do you call it? nomads again all right that's all i have to say folks thank you for your time and attention and support and please press the if you subscribe to this channel press the notification button so you can get alerts as to when i upload videos and new content i appreciate your support in whatever way you um choose to support thank you for your time and attention have a good day and i will see you in the next video